What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. My name's Robbie and in this video we're going to be taking a look at pagination in Golang. So more specifically I'm going to be doing this in GORM which is the top ORM for Golang. And yeah, basically here's our issue. So I have this website right here with a giant list of people and basically it's way too long for one page. So I'm going to take this page and turn it into a paginated version where it shows 10 per page. I can see two pages on the left and right of the current page. And then I can always see the first and last page. So uh, this is kind of like a medium complexity pagination uh, module. I think the most simple would just be previous and next. And then if we took it a step further, we could do something like this mystery website where uh, say you're on page 576, they kind of bring you down in steps. So instead of just showing, you know, 575 and 574, they go, oh, 346, 230, 115, and then one. So I thought that was kind of a nice touch. We're not gonna be doing that, but I think this is a good in-between. I think you'll like this video. So uh, make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, let me know you're there. If you have a video request, put it in the comments. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so here's what I'll be starting out with in this video. This is just a basic gin app and uh, it connects to a database. And it's using HTML templating and it serves static assets. And it just has one route, which points to the function uh, right here. And all this function does is fetch all the people and pass it to the index template. If we take a look at that template, uh, we just have an H1 and then we have a table with a header. And then we're looping through each person and rendering a row. And that's pretty much it. If we look at the model, it just has a first name and last name. So all this code will be available on GitHub if you want to clone it and follow along. All right, so let's start by going to our main file and I'm going to go to the routing section right here and I'm going to add an additional route and it's going to be slash page and then colon page so we can accept the page number and then it's going to point to the same exact function. And now what this allows us to do is in the browser now we can go to slash page slash two, three, four, whatever, and we can use that um, number in the URL to fetch the correct records. And now if we go to our function right here, we can basically um, get the correct records by using limit and offset. So if we check out the docs, they show some examples right here. So if we wanted 10 per page, we could just add dot limit 10, and now it'll only show the first 10. So let's check that out. So now I just have one through 10. And if I added an offset, so say I went offset 10, it'll push it 10 forward. So now I'll show uh, 11 through 20, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, 11 through 20. And basically we can use that to uh, get the right records. So let's start by getting the page number off the URL. So to do that, let's create a new section, get page number. And we can get it off the URL by going c.param. And then we just give it the param we want to get. We call it ours page. And this comes from the URL. So right here we said, hey, we'll call that page. And then uh, let's see what this returns. It returns a string. So we'll call this page string. And then we're going to have to convert it to an integer. So to do that, we can go uh, string convert .atoi. And then let's give this the string, which is page string. And then we'll assign this to a variable called page. And then it also returns an error. So I'm not going to use it. So I'll just put underscore. And now we should have our page as an integer. And we can plug that in, right? Um, actually, we can't plug it in yet. So we got to calculate the offset. So let's go offset is equal to, and let's see, say we're on page two, it'd be two, and then we got a minus one times uh, 10 per page. So say it was three, that would calculate the two and the offset would be 20. So that seems like it would work. So right here, let's put the page number and then let's plug offset in right here. Let's see if that works. I'm going to go back to the browser and I'm on page one right now. Say I go to page four, I get 31 through 40. If I go to page eight, I get 71 through 80. And if I just go to the index path, I still get one through 10. So that seems to be working good. So now let's add some next and previous buttons down here. So we're going to have to pass this template some more data. So let's define how that data looks up here. I'll go type pagination data. And it's going to be a struct and this struct's going to have a next page which will be an int 
It's going to have a previous page, which is also an int. And then uh, let's just pass it the current page. Let's go current page, also an int. And then let's go down to our template render right here. And we're going to add the data. So let's go pagination. And then this is going to receive pagination data. And we'll go next page. And next page is going to be equal to page plus one. And then let's add the previous page. And that's going to be page minus one. And then let's pass the current page, which would just be page. So that looks good. I just need a trailing comma right there. And now we should have this available to us within our template. So let's go to our index template. I'm just going to add a div down here with class pagination. Whoops. And then within that div, I'll add a UL, and then I'll add an LI and an A. And the A is going to link to slash page slash, and then previous page. So dot pagination dot previous page. And then we'll close the A tag and put, let's see, let's put previous inside there. And then we got to do the same thing for next. So I'll copy the LI paste it below and then change it to next and next page. And then let's go back to the browser and try this out. So if I refresh, I get my next and previous buttons and I'm on the index page, I hit next and it takes me to page one, which is a problem. But then if I click it again, I get the page two, page three, page four, and it works going backwards too. And then say I'm on page one and I hit previous, it goes to page zero, that's another problem. So we're gonna address that right now. So what's happening is when we're on the index page, this param doesn't exist. So page is getting assigned to zero and then zero plus one is equal to one. So we hit next that first time and it takes us to slash page slash one. So to fix that, let's assign page to be equal to one by default. And then we'll check if this param exists and update the page variable if so. So we can go if uh, page string is not equal to an empty string, which is the uh, zero value, then we'll update the page variable. And then, uh, yeah, that should fix it. Let's just add a comment here, calculating offset. And then let's go back and try it. So now I'm on the index page and I hit next and I get the two, but I can still go backwards. I can go to page one and then page zero, which is a bug. So let's fix that now. Let's go to our template. And we're basically going to disable this link when uh, we're on the first page. And we can do that with the if statement. So let's go if uh, greater than, and we want to check if pagination.currentPage is greater than one. So if that's the case, let me just add the else and end real quick. If that's the case, we want to show the link to go to the previous page. Otherwise, let's just show a span, which won't do anything. Let me change this to span and delete the href. So now let's go back. I'll go back to my um, index path. And now this is disabled. I go to next and it enables again. So that fixes that. And now we got to do the opposite for next. So I know I have 100 pages here, and then I can go to 101, which doesn't exist. So we're going to fix that right now. So let's go back to our controller, and we have to calculate the total number of pages so we can figure out where the end is. So let's just add a new section here, uh, calculate total pages. And to do that, we're going to have to get a total count of all the records of all the people. So if you check out the GORM docs, uh, they have this count function we can use. So let's uh, copy this right here. And we'll go total rows. And then how do we count it? We count it with uh, dot count. So let's, let's see, let's copy this right here. And ours is going to be initializers dot db. And then I want to get a count of the model and it's models.person. I'm going to delete this distinct part. And then we want to assign the count to total rows. And then I have a bug. Let's see what's going on. I have to add the brackets right there. 
So this should get us a count of all the, um, the rows and then total pages would be total rows divided by uh, the number we're showing per page. So let's add a new variable up here. I'll just go per page and that's gonna be equal to 10. And then let's use it um, right here. Let's add per page and per page right here. And then it's total rows divided by per page. And then that could be an uneven number, so we have to get the ceiling of it. So say it was like there's 2.5 pages. Well, in that case, there should be a third page. So we gotta round that up. And you can do that with math.seal. And then we just wrap that in it. And what's the error? Let's see what's going on. Value of type int 64 is float 64. Let's convert it to a float 64. So we can just wrap it like that. And then that fixes it. Let's pass this to the template. So I'll go down here and I'll just go total pages. And that's gonna be total pages. And we have to add this to our struct up here. So let's go up here and we'll add total pages. And we'll make that equal to an int. And then this is wrong, we gotta convert it again. So let's go total pages, and it'll convert it to an int. So now we have that available to us. So let's go back to our template. And this time we'll wanna compare if, and let's see, if uh, the current page is less than, so dot pagination dot current page, I spelled that wrong. If that's less than uh, total pages, so dot pagination, dot total pages. If that's the case, we want to show the next button. Otherwise, we want to show the span version, which doesn't do anything. And let's see if that works. Let's go back to the browser. And I'm on page 100, I refresh and it's disabled. If I go to 99, it's enabled again. So now let's show the current page in the middle and we'll start adding the two on the left and right. So let's uh, go back to our code. And right here we have the previous link and the next link. So in the middle, let's go li. And this one's always gonna be disabled since it's the current page. And we'll just go uh, dot pagination, dot current page. And that should show the current page in the middle. Let's double check. There we go. And now let's show uh, one before and one after. So that's actually the same as uh, next and previous. So let's just show it again. We'll go previous and next. And then uh, we can just copy this right here. And instead of previous, it's gonna show the page number. So we'll go uh, and copy this right here. And then let's do the same for next. So let's change this to next. And this is gonna show next. Let's see what that does. I'll go back and refresh and now I get 198. But we don't always wanna show that. We only wanna show it when it exists. So let's go back and we'll wrap the whole thing in an if. We'll go if. And how can we do this? We want to make sure that the current page is less than is less than total pages. And then we'll wrap it at end. And I'm realizing right now that we did it right here already. So let's just copy this line and we'll wrap it around this. Let's try that out. I'll go back and now it's gone. If I go to 99, it's there again. If I go to page one, it's not there. Oh, it is, but it's disabled because that's the current page. If I go to two and it appears again. So that's working good. So now let's add one more um, to the outside. So let's go to the middle somewhere and let's see how we can do that. So we can't do calculations within this template, so we're actually gonna pass our template some additional data. So let's go up to our struct, and we're gonna add two after, which will be an int, and we're gonna add two below. 
which will be an int as well. And then let's go down here and pass that data. So let's go to after is going to be equal to page plus two. And two below is going to be page minus two. And then let's go back to our template. Let's lowercase that real quick. Go back to our template. And let's see what we got. So we got uh, the previous button. And then we got the one below right here. So let's do two below above that. And it should show if current page is uh, greater than two. And then let's change this to two below. And two below. If I can type it, there we go. Let's see if that works. So I'll go back and now it shows the two below and say I get the three, it still shows it. If I get the two, it's gone. So that's working good. So now let's do two after. So let's scroll down. We got uh, one after right here. So it'll go right below this. And this time we want to check if less than or equal to, and we want to check two below or two after. We want to make sure that's less than total pages. And then if that's the case, we'll show it. So let's add two after and two after. And let's see if that works. We'll go back here. I'm on page 98. It shows two after. I go to 99 and it's gone. If I get to 100, it doesn't show anything. So we got it working pretty good. The last part is we just want to show some dots and then the first and last page if need be. So let's go back to our template and we'll scroll up to where we have the previous link, which is right here, and we'll add it right below that. So let's copy this right here. And uh, we want to show the first page. So let's change this. And we only want to show that if we're on page four or greater. So let's change that to three and go back and try it. So there we go. Doesn't show it, doesn't show it, doesn't show it. And then we get the four and it finally shows it. So we gotta um, add the dots when we're on five or greater since there's a gap. So to do that, we can just add another if statement. We'll add it right below. And then we wanna check if we're on page five or greater. And if that's the case, we'll just do span with three periods. And then we'll go back. There we go, we got it. And then we get to page six. Or no, we get the page four and it's gone. So it's working good. So now we gotta do it for the, the end. So let's go to page 98 again. Right, let's go 96. And then let's go back to our template and we'll scroll to the bottom where we got our um, next link right here. So let's copy this. And we can just change this to less than, so it'll be one greater than that. And then we can just change this to total pages. So it'll show a link to the last page. And let's see if that works. So now I got that link to 100, I get the 97, and then 98, and it's gone. So now we gotta show the dots. So let's uh, just add those right here. Li span, whoops, span dot dot dot. Oh my God, I hit caps lock. All right, there we go. Now let's go back and try that. So I get the dots even though there's not a gap between those two numbers, so we gotta fix that. And to do that, we have to pass additional data to the template. So let's go back to our controller, and we're just gonna add three after. So let's go three after. It's gonna be an int, and then we'll pass it to the template. We'll go down here and we'll do three after. Uh, page plus three. And then we'll go back to our template and where we're showing it, where is it? We'll move this to a separate if else. So let's copy this. And let me fix my uh, indentation. And then instead of comparing it to two after, we wanna do it for three after. And that should fix it, let's go back. So I'm on page 97, it doesn't show it, and then I get to 96, it starts showing it. So we got our pagination working good, but it's really kinda not very reusable. You really wouldn't wanna be doing this in every single route that you have pagination. So let's try to move this into something reusable. I'm gonna create a new folder in my project, I'll just call it helpers. 
And then within that file, within that folder, I'll create a file called pagination.go. Let's go in here and we'll create a new function called get pagination data. And then it's gonna be part of package helpers. So there we go. And now let's go back here and let's move our struct into that new file. And then this function is gonna return pagination data. So let's go inside here and we'll just return pagination data. And then let's see, let's go back here. So now uh, let's move all this inside of the return right here. And then we're gonna have to pass this a page. So let's go page is gonna be type int. And then uh, let's calculate the total pages within that function. So let's copy all this. And I'll just paste it up here. And let's see what we got. We need the per page variable. So let's pass that into our function as well. So per page will also be an int. And then we don't wanna hard code in the person model here. So let's have it accept a model, which will just be of type interface. So now we can put model right here. So there we go. Now let's go back here and let's calculate the offset within it also. So I'll go back in here. Let's just go calculate offset. And then we'll add it to this struct right here. So let's go up here and we'll just go offset. We'll be type int. And then let's add it down here. So offset, and it's gonna be equal to the offset variable above. <clears throat> there we go. So now let's use this new function back here. So let's go um, right here and we'll go pagination is equal to uh, helpers dot get pagination data. And we gotta pass this a page. And then we got per page. And then the model we're working with, so ours was models dot person, add the brackets. There we go. And now let's use it down here. So let's delete this. We'll just pass it pagination. And then for offset, it's now gonna be pagination dot capital offset. <clears throat> and there we go. Let's see if that still works. So everything's still working good. But now the issue is if it was at a different route, it wouldn't work. So say we went back to our main and we change this to slash people and slash people slash page slash page. Watch what happens. So that doesn't exist. Let's go to slash people. And then I hit next and it takes me to the wrong page. So let's have our function accept the base URL. Let's go back to our code and I'm gonna go to the function and let's add base URL to the struct up here and it'll be type string. And then we'll have our function accept base URL of type string. And then we'll just add it down here. We'll go base URL is gonna be equal to base URL. And then we can use it within our template now. But first let's go to our controller and let's pass the base URL, which is gonna be slash people in our case. And then we'll go to our template here. And uh, now we just have to add it everywhere. So let's find everywhere we have slash page, change all occurrences and I'll go dot pagination dot base URL. And let's see if I broke it. Let's go back to our page. I'll go back to the working one and I'll hit previous. It works. I go to one, it works. So there we go, that's working good. Let's just move our pagination into a partial. So I'll create a new partial. I'm just call it pagination.tmpl. And then let me look how I did this. Let's define it. So we'll call it pagination. Now we gotta add the end. And then let's just copy the whole div within there. So let's uh, minimize this and cut it out. And then let's paste it in, go back and let's show it right here. So let me copy this line, I'll go pagination. And I think that does it, it's still working. We can go to all the pages and yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know you're there. Uh, video requests in the comments. Uh, 
yeah, I'll keep them coming and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.